Welcome to another Vectric tutorial. When I first bought my CNC machine I was looking for something to sell that wasn't expensive to make and produced a good profit. I designed a few simple keyrings and it wasn't long before I'd sold enough keyrings to cover the cost of buying the actual machine. The keyrings are great because the material cost is low and the profit margin is very good. They can be made using various types of wood or other materials if needs be and they are a good project for utilising offcuts or scrap pieces that you might have lying around. They can be engraved with standard text such as mum or dad, Mr and Mrs for occasions like weddings and anniversaries, Christmas crackers or personalised with the customer's choice of text and if needs be engraved on both sides. So first of all I'll show you how I design them using Vectric and then I'll pop some wood on the CNC machine and show you the process I used to make them. So the first thing to do is open up Vectric and click on create a new file. I'm using Aspire but other versions of Vectric should work just as well. We're going to be creating a single sided job type and job size is going to be 100mm wide by 100mm in height and 7mm thick. Z0 position will be material surface and XY data will be there in the centre at 0, 0. For now I'll leave the modelling resolution and the settings alone. Then click OK to set up the work area. So we're going to assume at this point that on our CNC machine we have a piece of wood fastened down measuring 100mm by 100mm and it's 7mm thick and we're going to be making a one-off keyring with the word oak tree engraved on top. The keyring itself is 85mm wide, 22mm high and 7mm thick. It's rounded at each end with a radius of 11mm and has a 4mm hole for a ring. So we start off by clicking on create a rectangle in the create vector section. Anchor point is in the middle, X and Y are both zero. Corner type is going to be radius external at 11mm to give us the curve ends. And width will be 85mm and height 22mm. Click create to bring up the vector and then click on close. This gives us the main shape for the keyring. So next we need a 4mm hole for the ring and we can do this very easily by clicking on the draw circle in the create vector section and setting the diameter to 4mm. But before we click create we need to position the circle vector in the correct place. This is something that I'd already worked out beforehand and it will be x at minus 37.3 and y 0. Click create and the circle vector will appear within the rectangle and click the close box. Now as far as the keyring is concerned that's all the vectors for the design. It really is that simple. At this point you could just machine it as it is and use them as blanks for the laser but we want to engrave them with text. You could just add some text and centralise it and it might look alright but that might not work for long text and I'll demonstrate what I mean. Typing oak in the text box gives us a keyring that looks acceptable. The text is centralised to the rectangle but it's not taken into account the keyring hole. So when you add the word tree you can see that it just fits inside the keyring but it goes past the hole for the ring and we don't want that. We want the text to be in front of the hole so that it can be seen properly when the keyring is assembled. There's several different ways to do this but I set mine up in the following way. This may be overkill to some because sometimes you can engrave text very small and discrepancies can't be seen but sometimes they can depending on the letters or numbers. So I like to make sure that the text is perfect so it looks correct on the keyring and if I ever need to enlarge it I know that it will be alright. All these parameters can be changed of course, so you might want to experiment to see what works best for you. So this is what I do. I add two guides, one at y7.5 and one at y-7.5. This is easily done by clicking the left mouse button inside the ruler at the top and dragging down to the correct position. If you need to amend once you've let go of the guide, just right click the guide. These guides will be used to set the maximum text height and this will depend on how you finish the edges of the keyring. I routed the edges on mine, so if the text is too high or too low, there's always that risk of rounding over the engraved part, so these settings can always be altered to suit. I add a rectangle by clicking Draw Rectangle in the Create a Vector section and have it set for X0, Y0, Corner Type Square, Width of 68mm and Height 22mm, then I click Create and Close. This now gives me some set parameters that I can work to when creating the text. So going back to the word oak, let's just say I create the text and it's already on the screen. I can highlight the word oak by clicking the left mouse button. Then if I hold down shift and now click the rectangle I created, I can now click on the align selected objects icon under transform objects and under align to selection, I click the middle icon in the section which is entitled center and the text aligns central to the rectangle. I'll click close and deselect the text by pressing escape. Now you'll have probably noticed that the text is still in the center as it was before the guides in the rectangle. But now that I have both of these up, 
it gives me something visual to work to and to use as a guide for setting the text up properly if it's too long. As it stands now, the text is over the guidelines and runs the risk of being rounded over by the router as it's past what I class as the safe zone. And this will be different for everyone depending on the finishing method used. So you'll probably want to play around with the parameters. But if I now add the word tree, you can see that the text no longer fits on the keyring and I need it to sit inside the rectangle that I added earlier and this is easy to rectify. I highlight the text by clicking it with the left mouse button and under transform objects I click on set selected object size. Scale selection needs to be highlighted if it's not. Then move your cursor over to the middle of the left hand side of the text until you get the four little arrow icon and simply hold down the left mouse button and drag the text until it snaps to the rectangle. Repeat this on the right hand side and use the guides to snap the top and bottom. Then deselect by pressing escape and close the box. Now I know that some people will be happy enough to machine things at this point, but the text just isn't quite right yet, as the individual letters are at various heights and letters aren't all spaced correctly. Again, this is something that's easy to rectify, but if you have a lot of these to do, it can be quite time consuming. There's been occasions in the past when I've had over 300 of these to machine in one go and it can get a bit monotonous, but it does make the difference between a keyring that looks okay and a keyring that looks spot on. It may only be a keyring, but it's still showcasing your work, so it's worth doing properly. It comes down again to personal preference, but I tend to do as follows. I select the text, then right click and select convert to curve so I can select individual letters. Then I press escape to deselect the text. The first thing I do is size the letters to the guidelines. With letter K, I can simply click on it to highlight it. Click on the set selected object size like before and adjust like I did earlier. With the letters O, A and R, the letters are made up of more than one vector, so when I click on the letter I need to press shift and click onto the additional vector, so that any adjustment applies to both pieces, otherwise only part of the letter will resize. With the letters the same height, I just need to adjust the spacing in between so it looks even. Sometimes this can be tricky to get looking right depending on the letters or the font used, but adjusting the letters itself is an easy process to do. Simply highlight all of the letter that you want to move and either use a keyboard arrows to move the letter or drag it with a mouse from within the letter itself. I sometimes have to zoom in and out to make smaller adjustments. When everything looks right, highlight all of the letters by clicking and holding down the left mouse button whilst dragging the cursor across the text, right click then select group objects. Just be careful not to select the rectangle or the keyring by mistake. With the text still highlighted, press shift and left click the rectangle and centralise like you did earlier with the align selected objects tool. The text may not move if you haven't moved the ends of the text as it will still be centred, but it's always a good idea just to check. The keyring is now ready to be machined. Everyone's toolpath will likely be different to mine, but there are a few different options to consider. Ideally the text needs to be engraved first. I use a 90 degree V bit and it does the job very well in most cases. On rare occasions I have switched to a 60 degree V bit for finer detail. If you don't have a tool changer then you can save some time by using the same cutter for the ring hole as you would do for the profile cut. A 4mm spiral cutter could be used to drill the hole and to cut the keyring. Now I only have a 3.175mm spiral so I remove the ring hole using the pocket tool path and then I use the same cutter to profile cut. I use 3D tabs to secure the keyring when cutting and sand them off afterwards. So on the CNC machine I've set up two scrap pieces of Maranti. I usually make the keyrings out of Orc or Ash, but as this is only a demo it's a good excuse to use up some offcuts that I had lying around. The first job is engraving with a 90 degree V bit, and it's worth noting whilst this picture's up, that if you're making the keyrings, have the long length of the keyrings running with the grain and not across the grain and I'll show you why that's important in a minute. So it takes just seconds to engrave the text. I'm using a font with cerise here but the simpler the text the quicker the engraving is. For the hole and the profile cut I'll be using the 3.175mm cutter. 
I've set some extremely cautious parameters here just so I don't damage the cutter, but this part of the machining could easily be altered to be much quicker. The tabs are easily broken off with a chisel and with a quick pass of the sandpaper the edges are smooth. I've always used a miniature round off a bit on the edges and this one bit has helped finish several thousand key rings. Now this is why it's important to machine the length with a grain. The first key ring is the one that I machined in the video and I'm applying a lot of force and it's very strong. Machine them across a grain like this next one and they'll snap very easily, even with the slightest bit of pressure. Applying a finish is optional and may depend on the wood that you use. Some woods look better left natural, but most woods look a lot better when oiled. I just dip them in oil, then dry them with a rag and hang them to dry, making sure to dispose of any oily rags properly as they can self-ignite as I've shown in one of my previous videos. When dry, it's time to add the key ring. A lot of people make the mistake of just adding a single ring. What really makes the difference is adding what they call a jump ring, which is just an intermediate ring, and I think the ones that I use are 10mm in size, and the main ripple ring is 25mm, both of which I purchased on eBay. For a more professional package look, you could have some cards made up and place everything inside a little plastic sealed bag, which makes them more presentable and keeps them looking nice and clean until they're ready to use. So at this point you might be wondering how I managed to make this profitable, because the process looks quite time consuming, but it was fairly simple depending on the scenario. A lot of my work was batches of keyrings. Many customers wanted 10, 20, 30, even 300 keyrings at once. Sometimes I had to create different texts for different keyrings, but on some occasions they were all the same text which saved a lot of time. I created designs and templates to machine 30 in one go, which took no time at all to make. A lot of the time was in material preparation, but a 25mm thick piece of oak, roughly 600mm long, can be cut in half and machined flat and put on the CNC. It is a must to skim it flat on the CNC though, so that the engraving is even throughout. But what about when somebody just wants a single personalised engraved keyring? Well that was easy to do too. I'd make a batch of keyring blanks, just keyrings without any text as you can see from this piece in the video, and prepare the keyrings as normal. I then cut a pocket the size of the keyring into a spiral board and simply popped in a blank when I needed to engrave a single keyring. The same spiral board has been used to produce thousands of one-off personalised keyring and it still works to this day. The beauty of this method is that it's very easy to then engrave both sides. Another big time saver was to create a table with Invetric where I could save all the text that I designed and every time I got a request for a keyring I could simply add the text to the table so if I got another request for that same text I could just drag it over onto the keyring and create another file or as I did on several occasions just save the file into a separate folder ready to use again. Some files like the Mr and the Mrs or the Touchwood are held on a separate pen drive so they're always there ready to use. So as you can see it's possibly one of the most simple projects to make but the possibilities are endless. So if you're stuck for items to sell online or at craft fairs, then perhaps give the keyrings a go.